Hello, this is Katie. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if it's your first time. Uh, it may be your first time based on the type of video that it is. So, if it is, I'm excited that you're here. I have three of these sheets, and I'm going to be going through three different types of goal sets, I should say. Um, and then writing them down as I talk about them. So these are my 2024 goals for the year, um, but they're going to be crafty related, reading related since I got into that in 2022, and weight loss related. So I'm going to start with, I think I'll do crafty last, and then I'm going to start with... Um, weight loss I think so hopefully this is bright enough I have many lamps and none of them ever seem to be bright enough so hopefully um, this is bright enough for you to see so I am going to just write at the top here the type and then uh, go through each one of them so the uh, ultimate goal, I think I'm going to write that first, would be to uh, how much weight I want to lose in the year. And if I can stick to it and take this seriously, that is going to be quite a hefty goal. Um, I'm going to write out pounds. So that will be to lose 100 pounds, which is entirely possible and... Um, yes, I have that on me. Um, so that is going to be the super, super ultimate goal. The smaller ones are going to be kind of more habit related. Uh, so the second one is going to be weigh in every day. Uh, I know that this works for some people and it doesn't work for others. There are others who don't want to step on a scale at all. And I know that everything fluctuates by the day. So some people only weigh once a week, but I want to see that every day. I can't have a once a week habit. I want to make it a habit that's every day um, because if it's only once a week, I may not want to do that. So I know weight fluctuates. I'm not going to be put off by that, but being able to see that trend after weighing in daily and also the scale that we have is tied to an app so if you open up the app and step on it it tracks it and I can see a trend and everything inside the app and it tracks body fat percentage and everything so uh, there's a little more incentive to be able to see or want to see that trend and um, so that will be one of those so the uh, next one is going to have to do with our walking pad, which if you haven't heard of a walking pad, it's um, basically a smaller treadmill with no handles and it's narrower. Uh, so it's just a pad, like the bottom part of a treadmill, but smaller so that you can store it under a bed or wherever. Um, we've been using that and it's been working really well. Um, being in a rainy cold, possibly icy, probably not this winter because everything is very warm right now, uh, but possibly icy situation. We don't want to go walking outside unless it's, you know, safe to do so. And walking is what I enjoy doing versus having like an exercise bike or something like that. Our HOA is working on putting an exercise room together, which is really nice because the cabana where it would be is like a one minute walk from our unit. And so that'll be really nice to have as an option. We also have the gym as an option. One of the goals may be to uh, use that more often because we are paying for it. But the walking pad, I enjoy walking. So having that walking pad indoors um, has been really nice. So the goal for that is to do minimum of 30 minutes each time. I have gone longer. I'll write that out. Um, and so I know that I can go longer than 30 minutes, uh, but that'll be the minimum. And then five days 
per week. And then three of those need to be before work in the morning. So I can just get up, I can throw on my tennis shoes, I can do it in my pajamas or throw on a pair of bike shorts, do that in the morning before my shower. And that that is one of the main goals regarding the walking pad that I wanna make sure that I do. Um, this next one is going to have a little bit to do with uh, the general overall goal of not spending money on things that we don't need. And one of them is to cook at home more often, not spending money on takeout or going out to eat um, as often as we can help it. And um, so we'll be doing that. I also have, let's see, so I'm going to put I'm going to add the gym and this is just going to have to be a more often, I don't know how many days per week, um, especially in the, you know, kind of winter rainy season, it's really hard to want to get in the car and go to the gym or to do that after work when I have like the walking pad at home. Right. So just try to use that more often. Um, one of them that is totally, not totally, like weight loss related, but I am going to try to not cut my hair. Um, I usually chop it off, uh, not too short, but uh, maybe a little shorter than shoulder when I just get annoyed with it. Um, but I also have a daily vitamin I found and people mentioned that um, it was great for like their hair and nails. It just happens to be a multivitamin. Um, so I'm hoping to see some like, you know, I want to get my hair a little bit longer. Then I can decide once it's grown out if I really don't like that. But uh, I would like to see my long hair again. Um, so there's that one. And then let's see my water goal. So water is going to be minimum that was too many <laughs> ounces per day per day is now one word um so 100 ounces that's completely doable for me 128 is a gallon and i actually got a gallon uh water bottle like a hydro the, it's an iron flask it's the cheaper version but just as good of hydro flask um but i got a gallon one and i love her and she's awesome uh so she's 128 but if i can get 100 in um i think that is doable for me and i know that that is going to definitely help with weight loss and i really need to focus on getting that water in um so i think those will be my top goals there. So we've got the overall goal, lose 100 pounds, which can be done in a year. Uh, may take longer than that, and that's fine. That would be about two pounds a week, and one to two is perfectly healthy range. And I don't want to lose it too quickly um, either, because that has not great side effects. Um, weigh in every day. The walking pad, minimum of 30 minutes, at least five days a week, and three of those before work. I can then do it after work or on the weekends. Uh, cook at home more often and gym more often. Those will go together. Try not to cut my hair and also take my daily vitamin and the 100 ounces minimum of water per day. So those are the weight loss goals. Next... We've got two of those. Okay. Next we have our reading goals. I started reading in 2022, reading more. I started reading when I was one, let's be honest, but uh, reading more books in 2022 when I found Bookstagram and made one of those and that has been fun. So in 2021, I read one book. I was just not a person who read, you know, I was busy crafting and doing other things and probably having a stressful job at the time, 
which I no longer have either of them. Um, so that will help a lot with these 2024 goals. Not being constantly stressed out is going to work wonders for being able to achieve these things. So uh, in 2022, I read like 76 because I was trying. And this year, my goal was 100 and I'm at like 106 or 107. And so for this next year, I'm going to be aiming for 150 books. Um, let's see. And I'm doing pretty well on this, but it is a goal. And I saw this on Instagram. 50% um, of them need to be by BIPOC authors, and I have plenty of books in my own collection to be able to achieve this. That is Black, Indigenous, or People of Color, if you're not aware what that stands for. Um, so I will be able to do this just fine since this year I was most of the year stuck in an extremely stressful job. I wasn't reading as much as I wanted to read, and now I have a lot more time to do that. So I think 150 is completely doable. And this is completely doable as well. There are many great stories out there to tell or to be that or have been told. <laughs> and I have them in my collection. So that comes to and ties into I will be reading from my collection that I have, which is very large. I just rescanned all of them. You do not need to know how many there are, but I have plenty of physical books that I have not read. Uh, so that brings me to my no buy 2024. I will be reading from my own physical collection and the library and Kindle books that I already own on my Kindle. Uh, so I have plenty to read. I do not need to buy any new books. That being said, I do have from Barnes and Noble and Christmas gift cards that I spent this week. Um, they had a deal and a sale and etc. So basically I should have about $50 in rewards from that. I haven't checked the balance, but I know it's at least 50, it might be 55 in my Barnes and Noble membership account. Um, and I'm also not renewing my membership, which is up in January. I'll need to ask them if I can use the rewards after if I don't renew my membership. Uh, but it's up halfway through January. I'm not renewing it. That's part of the no buy because I'm not going to be using it. I'm not going to be going to the store and using a membership with discounts in order to buy more books. So that should be fine. Um, but there is going to be 50 or $55 in there that I can use to purchase books, but I can't go over that. So I'll need to make sure I get very close uh, in order to use all those rewards. So no buy. I'm not buying any new books in 2024. I do not need them. This is also part of a general no buy of pretty much anything that is not necessary. Um, so, oh, there is one book that my friend wrote. I am going to link her book down below. One book because it comes out this year <laughs> and I have to buy it. I already pre-ordered it. But because it's Amazon, they don't charge you until they ship it. So I am going to be charged for a book in July that I pre-ordered months ago. Um, and that is my friend's book. And that is the only exception because she wrote a book and it is being published. And that is amazing. So she's my exception. I will link the book down below. Um, so the other part, uh, if you're not aware of something called NetGalley. It is, you can it'll open to anybody, you can sign up, but basically you go in and you create an account and you can ask for um, advanced reader copies or ARCs, ARCs of books. And if you get approved, you can then read it. It's going to be, there's audiobooks. Uh, I usually just do the eBooks. Um, you're not gonna get physical copies in the mail, but you, can get ebooks or audiobooks if you request them and if you're approved. Um, they have what is called a ratio. It's your feedback ratio. I should have written that in front. 
but your feedback ratio is a percentage, basically the number of books you've requested and gotten versus what you have read and then given them uh, a review on. And mine is not great. It's at 13% currently. I want to turn that into 80%. So I do need to go through and read some of my NetGalley books and give my response on them. And a good way to begin or start if you're new to it is to look for books that are read now. So if you don't want to risk requesting and getting rejected because they see that you're new, it's like trying to get a job without experience um, and they say you need to have experience, but how are you supposed to get experience if you can't get a job? You know, the whole uh, spiral there. So what you can do is go in and look for, there's a category you can look under that just says read now that anybody can get. And then you give them on your account, you give them like your Kindle email address. You have to look up what that is in your Amazon account. And then you just say send to Kindle. And so what you want to do is probably start by reading some of the ones that are under read now so that you don't have to ask for them or get approved. Read them, give your feedback, and then start requesting once you have a good feedback percentage on those. That's how I would recommend going about that. And then if you are a reader or become a reader and you start requesting books that are popular and you get approved for them, it's very exciting to be able to read something months before it comes out. Um, but they do look at your ratio. So I want to turn my 13 into 80. I have a mix of books that I did receive when I requested, but I also have a bunch of read now ones in there as well. So I need to get through those. Um, so that is going to be one of my bigger goals in regards to reading. Um, so I think also four days a week, I'm going to go into my phone and figure out what amount of time this is. There are a lot of videos on YouTube of people, the booktube community doing these, swapping your screen time for reading. I've already set Instagram on a one hour limit, although I think I went over that since and it hasn't stopped me. So I don't know why I set a limit if it's not going to stop me. I think it's in my phone. I told it to like tell me I'm doing it too much. But for four days a week, I'm going to swap the screen time. You can go into your apps and go into your like specific app and see how much time you spent in that app or whatever on a certain day or that week. Um, so each day I'm going to squat, uh, swap my average screen time on a high screen time day for reading time. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So if the previous day or one of my averages was like spending two hours a day in Instagram, I'm going to not do Instagram and instead add two hours of reading time to my day. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, one of my more specific goals is um, I want to read at the same time that I am watching through the show, Pretty Little Liars, because it's just great. My husband and I have watched through it like twice now. It's just like sometimes it's so terrible, it's so good. I don't know how to describe it. Um, and I don't know, I just love to watch it. So, but they started out as books and I don't, I know that the books are different and they're pretty different. So I want to kind of compare um, and take notes just for fun. This is just a dumb fun goal because I do have all the books and they're like teen sized books. They're not, you know, adult novels or anything like that. So it should be pretty easy to kind of line that up and watch as we go. I will be reading them. My husband will probably watch with me, um, but that should be kind of fun. So I think I only wrote down five. Um, but I think I will add, because I pre-wrote these down, I'm just writing them down for you as we go. But one that I didn't write down, I think I want to set an amount. I have a Pango bookstore, which is just an app for buying and selling books, used books, whatever. Uh, I think I want to have a goal of how much I can hit. I have plenty. And as I read, I don't keep books. So as I read a book that I own, I will sell it unless... 
it's really, really pretty, or I think I'll read it again, which is pretty rare for me. So I think I want to try to sell, um, I will say 400 because this year I almost hit three, but I think I should be able to hit 400 on Pango. And I also don't want to hit like the 600 where you get like a tax thing back and you have to claim stuff. <laughs> so I don't want to go over, I don't want to hit 600 because I don't want to deal with that on my taxes. Um, because then they mail you a form that you have to deal with and I don't want to do that. So anyway, <clears throat> we've got our 150 books, 50% by BIPOC authors and no buy except for my one, my friend's book in July. Um, a net galley, I need to get my 13. I want to get that up to an 80%. I don't know how many books that takes. I probably won't be requesting any new ones because they'll probably look at that and not approve me anyway. So that's fine. Um, four days a week, I'm going to swap screen time for reading and then read through and watch at the same time. Pretty low liar. So I'll have to stay pretty consistent because usually when we're watching a show, um, right now we started suits because my husband's mom told us to, and I'm glad we did because it's fantastic. But we're only just started season two and they have eight seasons. So we'll have to finish that before I start this, which is pretty easy because we're kind of plowing through them. Um, once we are watching a show, that's kind of like the only show that we watch until it's done, if that makes sense. And this one has many seasons as well. And it was kind of on at the same time as Suits, we just realized. And there were two characters in Suits that were in Pretty Little Liars. So we thought that was really funny. Um anyway sidebar uh and then try to sell 400 on pango book selling app um i will link my pango store down below i have many 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 books for sale and i have some deals and i wrap them up really cute and i give you bookmarks and stickers and so if you want to go through and you want to start reading more in 2024 you should check out my store i will link that down below so those are the reading goals now what you're probably here for is the, we're just going to call them crafty, crafty goals. All right. So I know I attempted this in, what was it? 2022. And I started a group of people who actually, some of them kind of stuck to it and they did pretty good. But in the general vicinity of not buying things I don't need, we're going to do a no buy 2024 on crafty items. This does not pertain to, and I will not have a problem with this at all, running out of white cardstock, black ink, glue, necessities. Whatever you consider a necessity, fine. If you have a business and you, in order to fulfill an order, need that red cardstock, go buy however much you need to fulfill that order. If you're doing this for work or you're trying to fulfill orders because you, you know, sell your crafty items, um, that is fine, but you get to define what necessities only means to you. Mine is basically what I listed, but again, I have enough of those things to last me years. So I don't think it'll be an issue. Um, I think what I want to do, I've got two options for this is either on Google sheets, which I have just finished doing again with my books scanning them all their barcode just because I love scanning stuff um google sheets or there's an app I downloaded I haven't really logged into it or done anything called color my world where I think you can take pictures of things I want to catalog my stamps I want to know what stamp sets I have a picture of it would be great because then I don't have to list the types of images or sentiments are on them. So just having an app, I just, I have the fear that the app will go away or crash and I'll lose everything that I put in there when I can trust like at least a Google sheet to stay there. But I would prefer to have, you know, the photo of the stamp set or something like that. And I can get that photo off the internet so it's much clearer to look at, etc. So at some point I want to spend some time cataloging the stamps that I have. Um, I want to do more watercolor cards and maybe tutorials 
on YouTube for those. So I don't want to stray too far from cards since that's what my channel is, but I do want to do more watercolor because I love it. Um, and even if that is stamping images and coloring them in with watercolor, uh, if people want to get into that, I want to make that more, you know, any, any tutorial, any, you know, like card video that I do that includes watercolor, I generally am giving advice as I go. So it's kind of like a watercolor tutorial um, situation as well. So there's that, um, either with stamped images or just watercoloring in general, not stamped images. Um, so there is also, let's see, I'm going to add always B, like ABC, but ABD, always be decluttering. I have a lot to do. I'm working on that today. I want to get my craft area just ready for the new year. Um, it has been very challenging because I just have too much stuff in the way and trying to get that organized has been a little difficult, but always be decluttering and just going through if nothing is something is not serving me anymore. You know, I can come up with more de stash boxes throughout the year things that can go to a better home where they will be loved, um, that I can do. Then one, uh, very specific is I want to host a coffee themed Instagram hop because I have lots of coffee cards, coffee, oh, sorry, stamps, coffee themed stamp sets and they're all very cute and I don't use them enough. So I want to host and gather a coffee themed Instagram hop. So I will reach out on Instagram. I'll also link my Instagram down below. Um, I will reach out at the time whenever I need to gather people, uh, in on Instagram and you can let me know if you want to be involved in that. It would just be posting a, probably posting a picture of your card and then in the caption tagging the next person. So it'll be kind of like a train of people. It'll start at mine and then mine will link to the next person, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, so we will do that. And then, um, let's see. Oh, I had kind of an idea, but I think I want to conquer... I have many, many <laughs> oh hoo hoo markers. That's an A. Um, and they, well, they are great. I will just pull one out in front of me because I have them here. Uh, I tend to use my tri blends a lot when I do color just because they're so easy and I actually really like the combos and they work great together. My tri blend markers, my Copics, I don't reach for as much as I should. Um, I need. I need just three set colors and then, you know, and then I'm fine. But if I have to sit down and figure out what colors go together, I don't do very well. I'm not creative or artsy. I can reproduce things, but I bought a lot of Ohuhu sets, uh, which they're just cheap markers from probably China, which is fine, but they're actually really good quality. The nib, um, I have all the, all of them are brush tip because they came out with those at some point. They're really good quality, uh, but the color range is so odd. So that's why Copic is still going to be the best overall, because they actually put thought into it. Copic is really good quality. These, I dare say, are basically as good quality as Copic, but some of the colors just do, they just don't make sense. And they, not a lot of them go together. It's very hard. So what I want to do is try to figure out color combos. Now I've heard what is one, I can't remember if it was Mary or somebody posted a video like ultimate oh who who marker chart or something along those lines. And it was like free. It was just like empty spaces for you to figure out combos. And I was like, no, I need, and I don't think anyone has done this. And if they have, please let me know in the comments. I need combos. I need to know the colors that actually go together. And if she did do some of those, that's great. Although I don't have all of them and I don't want to buy any more. I can't buy any more. Goal number one. 
And so I need to make do with the colors that I have. And because I've bought several sets of them, I have a lot of duplicates as well. I'm looking at two, three duplicates right now in front of me. So I need to figure out combos with the colors that I have. And it's hard to do that when someone who has a full set is coming up with color combos. I'm going to end up not having one of them and it's not going to work out. So I need to just play with all of them, I think. Get them down on paper. Look at them. The caps are not necessarily um, helpful. <laughs> That's another thing with these cheaper markers. The cap color is not super accurate most of the time. So there's going to be that. So I need to get these. Just get them down on paper. Play with them. And note which ones are going to go together and blend well. And then I need to use them um, because I have too many of them and yeah. Okay. So those are the crafty goals. No buy with necessities only catalog my stamps. I need to figure out how I want to do that. More watercolor cards, tutorials, videos, uh, always be decluttering host a coffee themed Instagram hop, which I am excited for, and then figuring out those marker combos and using my Ohuhu markers and also my Copics more often. Uh, this year was extremely challenging and I think maybe I made one card this year and that's really, really, really sad. So I want to change that. Um, I should add, where can I add? Let's add it here. I think I should keep track. Make 100 cards. I think I'm in a position to where I can do that. So added goal. Um, yeah. So those are the goals. I will keep these handy to remind myself. And yeah, those are them. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know your goals for 2024 down below. And I will link the things I talked about, my friend's book that's coming out, my Pango store for books, and also my Instagram. So you can follow me over there. Uh, that is mostly where I hang out um, for card stuff. Uh, I have been posting a lot because I haven't been making cards, but that will be changing in 2024. So thank you for watching. And I will see you guys next time. My next video should be my last haul before my no buy. And I got some pretty cute stamp sets in there. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, I will see you guys next time. Bye.